I double click on the Lynx 4 icon. The Lynx 4 is now PC, Apple Macintosh and Linux compatible and operates and looks the same on any operating platform. Okay, we're now going to start off by looking around the Lynx software. When the Lynx opens, you're presented with a palette to work on that looks like this. We've tried to make the icons along the top here easily recognisable as to what the function is behind the button. So if I just start off by showing you some of the basic functions. I come here, for example, to a, a button which has a picture of a pen with ABC written on it. I can then go to my drop down here and select pen colour. And if I needed to change the line width, that's picked up from here. I now come to my board and I simply start to write with virtual ink on screen. The second button along is a pencil icon with a picture of a flower next to it. This is intended to be a drawing tool. It allows you to set up a second pen width, a second pen colour, if so required. The third button along is a picture of a paintbrush. Again, this set allows me to set up a different pen width, different pen colour, without having to change the settings from the previous two. This button here allows me to draw curves. This one here allows me to draw different shapes or polygons. And this button here allows me to actually draw shapes which will then be converted by the computer into neat shapes. This button here allows me to draw straight lines. And if I change the settings from this drop down here, I can actually place an arrow on the end of my line there. I've started to create a series of slides or a lesson plan. By pressing this button at the top here, which is a page with plus next to it, it creates for me a new page. We can continue on looking at some of the simple function buttons. This button here, when depressed, releases a series of shapes and there are filled shapes and unfilled shapes available to me. If I just scroll down, you can see some of the unfilled shapes that you could potentially drag and drop onto your palette. If I wanted to, I could take my line drawing tool here and by sweeping centre to centre of an object, I can now connect these objects up. When I go to cursor mode here, I can actually move these objects around and they all now stay connected. So this is very good for drawing flowcharts and things of that nature. You'll notice now that when something is selected as an object, um, a grey box appears around it. I have here a rotation tool, and it tells me the, the angle of rotation to the right-hand side of the object. I have here an arrow which allows me to increase or decrease the size of an object. And with this box here, filled, it keeps the proportions of the object remain the same. If I press on this box here, it allows me to actually change the proportions of the object. Once again. You'll also notice here that there's an arrow towards the top right hand corner of the grey box. This allows me to do various other things with an object. For example, I could set it as a background. I could hyperlink it to a video or a document. I'll demonstrate that in a short while. But it allows me as well to do things like to clone the object. So if I wanted multiple objects, I can simply keep hitting the button here, cloning and increasing the number of objects on screen. Just go back to my slide sort of view here, and I've created page two. Other things that we have available to us. I'll create a new page and just put some work on the page. You'll notice here that I have two um, eraser buttons. This one here gives me a simple eraser and this one here allows me to sweep in and erase objects. I also have available to me a pen highlighter function, a block highlighter function, a crop tool, so my cropped image lies here, and a freehand crop tool. I'll go to a new page and we'll continue on looking at some of the other functions. I have the ability here to launch a working calculator. I can launch a keyboard on screen. 
And if I wanted to insert type text, I press the AA button, the sign, the button for inserting type text, and I can type in anything that I choose to type in. Go back to page one for a second. If we move along some of the buttons here, you'll see that I've got um, a forward and back arrow. So by pressing on this button, I can go forward and back through my pre-created slides. And if I want to go to full screen mode, I can at any time press this little square which has the buttons radiating out of it, and it allows me more screen area to work on. The icons remain pretty much the same as we've seen in preparation view or lesson planning view. There are a number of different buttons now viewable to me. This one here creates a curtain over my work. So if I did want to set this slide up to be perhaps a series of questions on this side with the answers on this side, I could, for example, lead my students to work out what the answers to my questions are. And then when I'm ready, simply reveal my curtain and then show them the answers to the pre-created -pre questions. To come out of this mode, I can do a right mouse click on screen or I can use the drop down here to exit. Also, while I'm in this mode, full screen mode, I have the ability to launch the Spotlighter. I can change the colour of the background, the size of the Spotlighter by doing, going to the drop down menu here, change the size, change the shape, and also this is where I can also use the spotlight as a magnifier if I wanted to or change the colour of the background. I can also bring up the brightness of the background if I wanted a reference as to where the um, spotlight was lying on screen. And once again, to come out of this mode, use the drop down and exit. Once we've finished working in full screen mode, I can come to the top left hand button here, which is a picture of a square with the arrows pointing inwards. This takes me out of full screen mode and sends me back into lesson planning or preparation mode. Other buttons that we have running along the middle section here is we have the ability to show the sidebar or not, as the case may be, and also to change the position of the sidebar either from the left hand side of the screen or over to the right hand side of the screen. This is uh, to enable us to work more conveniently depending on whether the operator is right-handed or left-handed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm jump, jump ahead a little bit now. I'm going to create a new page and I'm going to select a shape. And once the shape is selected, I'm actually now going to do something. I'm going to make a link between this shape, a hyperlink. I'm going to browse here. And I'm going to say, right, I'm going to hyperlink that shape to um, a small video because this introduces to the next button which is actually deliver lesson button. If I press this button here it effectively has the same effect of taking us out of preparation mode into full screen mode. However now this shape is hyperlinked to a video so when I press on the shape now lo and behold that button has now released the video that it was hyperlinked to. And once again, by pressing the top left hand button, I can revert back to preparation mode. We do have um, a zoom feature here, which zooms the page in and out, because bear in mind that we do have the ability by going into full screen mode to work on the full screen area, the full palette, in which case you would need to zoom down to see information if you'd drawn it, any information in the top uh, left or right, any of the corners here. This button here is intended to be used primarily with our clever tracker board, the pen of which has no buttons on it simulating a right mouse click. So we put that in there, if we press the button and then press on screen it has the effect of changing a single press on screen which would normally be a left mouse click, it changes it simply into being a right mouse click. Along the top here, we have um, Microsoft friendly buttons that you will be recognizable to you. So this one creates a new lesson book completely. This one here opens existing lesson plans. This one here is a save button. This one here is a print button. New slide and lock lesson. All toolbars can be grabbed and maneuvered around screen and placed in different areas convenient to the user of the application. 
and also by doing a right mouse click in the grey area here I can choose to simplify my toolbars if I want to so I'll bring back in the main toolbar there and have my tools viewable. I do have a tools menu here if I press tools and go to options this is where I can actually choose to, to um, organise the size of my icons so I can make my icons extra large or I can drop down the size of my tools according to the screen size being worked on. Okay, this is also where we find things like the changing of the language setting, for example. Other things that are now accessible but to me along the top here, for example, I can go to format and change the background colour, the background paper type, grid size, line width, line colour, etc, etc. Some nice options. So, for example, if I could just give you um, a quick example of that, I can change my background to become a graph. New page, format, lined paper. So some different options there, including music sheets, etc., to change my backgrounds. Um, other things that we have on our toolbars here, we've got copy, cut, paste, delete, that's mainly used for deleting objects. This is an undo and redo function. And this button here allows us, if we wanted to, to insert pictures. One other thing that I'm able to do within the links here is to insert video and audio clips. So I simply go to insert, go to perhaps insert video here, look for a suitable video to insert, then I would resize this video clip down into a viewable format and press play. At any time I can choose if I wish to stop the video because perhaps I want to annotate on top of that video. Now then, if I did nothing more at this point than try to close the links lesson book from the top right hand corner, it would ask me of course if I wanted to save my work and if I said yes I did want to save it and I wanted to give it a name, the default storage area for my slides would lie under the lessons tab here down the left hand side. However, I do have options. If I went to File, Save As, I can also save in different locations. I can give my work a name, but more importantly, there are now lots of different file formats that I can save in. So I can save in bitmap, JPEG, etc., PDF format, and quite importantly, to PowerPoint format. I can import PowerPoint presentations into links and convert the PowerPoint slides into link slides. To do that, I would simply go File, open, look for where my PowerPoint was stored, say open and all my PowerPoints would go through a file conversion process and be dropped into links as lesson slides. Now, one thing that, which is um, very frequently asked for is the ability to convert handwriting into typed text. Do we have the ability to do that? Indeed we do. If I write neatly a word such as elephant, go back to cursor mode here and select the word I want to convert then from the drop down here it gives me options of how the software interprets my handwriting this is the way I wanted it to be interpreted so I simply press on here and lo and behold the word the handwritten word elephant is now converted into type text be a little bit careful with this function as the misconception is that you can write pages and pages of information and convert it to type text the accuracy depends on the um, neatness of the writing and also we find it's best to write in a straight line um, as opposed to on the diagonal and that's how we manage to um, convert handwriting into type text.